What is going on, Colts Nation? And welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. Guys, we are in the middle of a series that we just started talking about all the Colts position groups. And we are starting here. We started with the quarterback. We are going to continue with the running back position. We're going to talk about each player that we feel like is going to have an impact and could make the final 53 man roster. We're going to break it down. We're going to have a lot of fun, a lot of good discussions. We're looking forward to it. So let's get into it. All right, pretty obvious. Colts' best player on offense last year, running back Jonathan Taylor. What a great second year for Taylor. Had over 1,800 yards. I mean, this dude was, in a lot of ways, the best running back in football, and it really wasn't close um, for the entirety of that 2021 season. He was the Colts' MVP. Like you were asking, he had 18 touchdowns on the ground as well. So Jonathan Taylor, Derek, as a player, I, I mean, what can you say about this guy? I feel like we've talked about him to death. He is the Colts <laughs> offense. He is the Colts right now. When you think of the Colts offense, you cannot think of Jonathan Taylor if you don't think of the Colts offense. Like, he is just the key part of how, what makes his Colts offense run. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, the Colts have not had a running back of this caliber in pretty much 20 years. I mean, it, it's been a long, long time since they've had a running back this talented and this excellent at being able to run the football. I mean, you're right. When everyone thinks of Colts, you think, oh, that's the team with Jonathan Taylor. And, you know, Jonathan Taylor in just two years in the NFL didn't even take two years to be considered the number one running back in the NFL and had one statistically one of the best seasons of a Colts running back in franchise history. So, you know, you fully expect going into his only his third year now, you know, Jonathan Taylor to continue to be that dominant driving force behind this Colts offensive line. And you hope now with Matt Ryan now being the guy who is going to now spice things up for the Colts offense, you think now teams might be able to actually take a little bit of pressure away from Jonathan Taylor. When that moment happens, Jonathan Taylor is going to hit that home run play once again, and he's going to ruin a lot of teams' days. I do wonder, like, you know, just because, I mean, we didn't mention this on the last podcast, maybe we should have, but just the imbalance the Colts had last year from the passing game to the running game, I mean, it was crazy, the difference, you know, and, and you know, the difference the Colts had in terms of, you know, faith in their running back versus their quarterback. It was night and day. So now the Colts get a quarterback that you know they're going to trust to you know, take the reins and, and kind of make things a little bit more balanced. You do wonder how much more opportunity that's going to give Jonathan Taylor um, You know, where teams aren't always knowing exactly how you're going to attack them, right? Teams were stacking the box against Taylor you know, because the Colts couldn't pass the football down the stretch, and that really came back to bite them because teams started really just focusing and honing in on Taylor and daring the Colts to pass it. That's not going to be the case anymore with Matt Ryan at quarterback because now the Colts will be able to attack, you know, not just one dimensional. So I do think overall that's going to help Jonathan Taylor from an efficiency standpoint and also maybe a carry standpoint. I do think the carries are going to go down a little bit and I think yes. they should because yes. we saw it, we've seen it with Derrick Henry, right? It adds up after a while. If you're continuing to be the focal point and you're getting all the carries for your team, it's going to catch up to you. Every player is human no matter how great of a running back they are, or how great of a player they are you're going to get injured if you get that many touches. That's just kind of how it is. So all that to say, I feel like it's going to be a really, really good thing for Jonathan Taylor this year. And I think you're going to see some of those efficiency things go up for him this next season. Uh, if he's going to be even more efficient than what he was in 2021, oh my God. I mean, that, <laughs> that, is, that is a scary thing to hear. I mean, you're right. It, it's... The, the carries definitely have to go down a little bit. Uh, not not saying that he needs to have 100 less carries. No, we're not saying that. But, you know, to say that Jonathan Taylor might have to get, you know, 30 to 40 less carries throughout the year, that's probably in the best of interest for him, uh, especially down the stretch. If you want to continue to keep him healthy and keep him going, you know, touching the ball 40 less times over the span of 15 games, I mean, really. Is that too much to ask? I mean, honestly, because in 17 games, that's two and a half carries per game that Jonathan Taylor doesn't touch. Okay, that, that's not going to kill anyone's momentum 
over the span of a season by touching the ball, by running the ball 40 less times. Uh, that's going to just only help Jonathan Taylor to remain a little more, uh, a little bit more protected, keep him uh, more energized down the stretch. And that's what you need. You need your best player to be energized at the end of the season when the going gets tough. And Jonathan Taylor, he's just going to continue to be that focal point, the do-it-all uh, running back. And if we can keep him at, at an efficient pace like we have, then this Colts offense is going to continue to remain dominant. Yeah, and and their offense will still flow through Jonathan Taylor, right? That's going to happen. We know that's all going to happen. Like, we're not saying that if you cut into his carries slightly, it changes the way the Colts use Taylor. Not at all. He's going to be the focal point, no question about it. But I do feel like he was slightly overused last year um, with just the amount of times the Colts gave him the football was kind of crazy, actually, with 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 how much he was touching the ball. And obviously you want your best players to touch the ball, but there was other players as well. And speaking of that, let's go to a guy who was criminally underused last year by the Colts in their offense. And that was Naheem Hines. I mean, we saw Derek in 2020 when he had Phillip Rivers. Naheem Hines was one of, if not the best receiving back in the NFL. The question of Naheem Hines is not ability. It's just how did the Colts get him involved? Right. Um, and I felt like they just didn't for whatever reason. You know, he had, you know, he had some catches, he had some nice moments, but he disappeared at certain points. And you're just like, why is he disappearing? You know, what is the deal? It's like it was, you know, what what do they even refer to as like the layups? Like passing it to Hines is kind of a layup, you know, in in certain ways, and he can turn it into something more. Um, and it felt like the Colts were taking away easy opportunities to give their offense the spark in the passing game when it came to not giving Hines more touches. So all that to say, I think, and Frank Reich has said as much, this guy's stock is going to go up a ton this next season. What are your thoughts on just the way Hines was not utilized last year and the ways he's going to be this year? Well, I mean, we've seen from OTAs and from minicamp, uh, we've already seen, you know, he's been getting some work in with the receivers and he's already had a nice 40-yard touchdown pass from Matt Ryan. You can already see that they're putting forth an effort to get some kind of game plan associated with a Naheem Hines. Now, going back to last season and even back further to 2020, 2020, we saw the the insurgence of a Naheem Hines. Uh, and that was just due to the fact that, you know, not only could he run the football, but what he was able to provide you in a halfback split back receiving option out of the backfield really just gave that Colts offense a another weapon that they just that no defense could really account for consistently and this last season I think that a multitude of reasons is why Naheem Hines became not as available throughout the season and the first thing being first is Frank Reich it came down to Frank Reich a lot of times Frank Reich just went with the hot hand and that was Jonathan Taylor. And what you end up doing is you take away the usage of a Naheem Hines by putting more emphasis on getting Jonathan Taylor involved, which was not a bad thing. But Frank Reich, I think is trying to backtrack away from what he did last season and his understanding that if the Colts want to open things up in the playbook a lot more, you need to be able to utilize Naheem Hines in a better way. And I think he knows that, and I think he understands it now versus what it happened last season. And a lot of it was also due, I think it was due to Carson Wentz. And Carson Wentz just shifting out of pass plays that could have been used for Naheem Hines, uh, just not throwing the football to Naheem Hines. There were a lot of times when you probably could have, and they just ultimately didn't give him the football. So there's a lot of different reasons why he was un, uh, underutilized and all of them being egregious just due to the fact that Hines is a very special player out of the backfield. His shiftiness and his ability to make people miss is a weapon you have to have and you have to use in the in on this offense or else you're ultimately just going to be extremely one-dimensional out of the backfield. And what the Colts are going to be able to do now with a Matt Ryan who knows how to dump the football to his running backs in certain situations like that 
and trusting Hines to just make a play with his feet, right? He makes one guy miss, and then that's a guaranteed four or five yards, right? Because he's just going to make a guy miss on the outside and get one good cut, and then he's going to get four or five out of it. And then you move on to live another play. So, you know, that's what I've been saying is so great about Matt Ryan is because he's going to be a lot like Phillip Rivers and understanding there's plays where Hines is going to be ready to go and you need to be able to do that. And people are going to be so fixated on Jonathan Taylor. They're going to forget that Naheem Hines is, he's got big play potential too. He he has it every time he touches the football. So hopefully we see the resurgence of Naheem Hines from 2020 because if that Naheem Hines shows up again, this backfield, this, this backfield is as good as any backfield in the NFL altogether. Mm -hmm. And not to mention Jonathan Taylor can also catch it out of the backfield. So maybe the Colts use him a little bit more in that department too. We'll see. But yeah, when it comes to Hines, you're right. He just needs to be utilized and we don't, question the talent at all it's just like let's just find ways to get him involved seems like the Colts are already starting to do that but Derek we know the first two guys we know there's no doubt they're going to make an impact but here's the question what about running back number three because the Colts signed Philip Lindsay they still have Deion Jackson they have Devontae Price they have CJ Verdell two undrafted free agents Uh, the Colts have some potential options here at running back number three and maybe even running back number four. Who knows? I mean, the Colts have kept four running backs on their roster before. So the question is, okay, who is going to kind of round out, you know, those running back positions for the Colts beyond their top two guys? What are your thoughts on kind of some of these other guys the Colts have potentially all going for that running back number three position? Well, I think the number three running back position is ultimately going to end up going to Philip Lindsay uh, at the end of the day. You know, when we're talking about guys like uh, Deion Jackson and CJ Vidal and and guys like that that are in the uh, that are going to be training camp bodies for sure. Um, I just don't know how much more there is to really say about them. I mean, when you look at the pedigree of a Philip Lindsay and what he has done over the span of his career. Um, and you know, never has he been in a situation like this where Indianapolis, I mean, if he were given the chance to run the football a few times, uh, throughout the span of the year, you know, Philip Lindsay is a guy that, you know, and his, and his prime was rushing for over a thousand yards. And that was with some pretty God awful offensive lines. And you look at what this Colts offensive line is built to do, right? And that's run the damn ball. Right, that's the motto. So you look at somebody like Philip Lindsay who loves to run the football the way that he does and running in those zone schemes, and that's exactly the kind of zone scheme blocking that the Colts love to do. You know, this is exactly the kind of situation for a Philip Lindsay. I really hope that he does get that third running back spot and is able to give some relief to Jonathan Taylor. I just felt Philip Lindsay should definitely be that third running back because I felt his pure running ability is better than Hines in between the tackles. I think that is what gets me is I think that Lindsay is a better in between, in between the tackles runner. And I mean, Hines is a guy you get him on the outside. That's what you need him to do. But Lindsay is a guy that can read the offensive line better and make those cuts. So I think Lindsay should get some more of those snaps. And I think he should be the one to take those 40 or 50 snaps from Jonathan Taylor this season and be able to run the football a few times for him to give him those breaks. Philip Lindsay is he's still got some potential left in him. He's only uh 28, you know, so he's still got some good years left in him. And I'm excited for this group because even if you don't think Lindsay's the number three guy. And even if there's a fourth guy, I mean, you know, we've Deion Jackson's been in the system. Uh, ZJ Verdell, good running back. Uh, Price was apparently a very spectacular running back coming out of college. So you got some interesting options for the Indianapolis Colts. It was very shocking to say the least that the Colts invested so much time into not only acquiring uh, certain running backs, but you know, acquiring a a vet in Philip Lindsay, who, I mean, I just don't think that can be understated. Just how important that 
that move personally could be. Yeah, it'll certainly be interesting to see how this group shakes out. But certainly on the surface, it seems like this is a very deep group and, and versatile as well in what they're able to offer. So let us know, guys, though, your thoughts on this running back position. Do you think it's a really good group? I mean, obviously, we know what Jonathan Taylor can do. But what do you think about the other running backs the Colts have on their roster? Let us know in the comments below. That'll do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, guys, go Colts. Yeah.